you are more important than just being an expert on particular topics. You are a whole human or a brand who is led by whole humans that can share the entire experience. The more we can use social media for more connection, the easier it is for us to grow as well as enjoy the content creation process. Being limitless is knowing your success and your growth are built on a radical belief in yourself. Limitless is honoring your purpose, your health and impact above all else. Limitless is never playing small because the more alive you feel in your life, the more growth and success you attract. Hi, my name is Jamie Ratterman and I am a holistic business coach, meaning I am just as invested in growing your health as I am in growing your wealth. With 11 plus years in brand and social media marketing, I help rebellious entrepreneurs master marketing and body leadership and say fuck it to the hustle. This show is here to encourage you to become more radically aware of your self-imposed limits, to break free of your shoulds, and to expand your brand into a movement led by you. Hello, lovelies. Welcome to another episode of the Limitless Podcast. I could not wait to, to turn on the mic today. I'm really excited about what we're about to dive into, but can you believe we are about to enter into April? I've been talking a lot in the Thrive Chat or Mastermind Voxer and all of these things these uh, other places talking about, okay, this is the end of Q1, but this year is like ramping up to be such a big year, especially for me. I am planning my wedding and I could definitely tell you it's so exciting, but it's also so rewarding that I have many people supporting me to get me to do that. So I don't have to make all the decisions for the record. I've made sure that Fred is helping me with a lot of things going, you, no, 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 you got to come here. What flowers do you like? That's been a big part of the process, but Most recently, I had one of my friends, I gave her the role of handling the bachelorette party and the idea of just having people care for you and make you feel special has been a beautiful thing. And this year is going to be fantastic. So if you're looking at your Q1 and going, oh oh my gosh, three months are in, we still got nine more. So we got so many big things coming. Um, But also too, if you, if you want a little support, here's your sign. Cause I can tell you that it has been amazing for me. But today we're going to talk specifically around how social media shifts and changes and also what your role is as somebody who's a creator on any of these platforms. So let's dive in. Social media is, well, social. (laughs) And as we consume content on a regular basis, the collective tastes can change. And some of the repeated styles of content that have had that have worked before don't have the same gusto that they once did. And for me, I think one of the biggest signs of this is that with the introduction of reels and even TikToks for that matter, the tips and tricks creators went ham, AKA we did it a lot. We were sharing every single thing that you should do. You should think of the apps you should use the tips. Like in general, education was such a big part of as soon as uh, someone gave us an incentive to get on video, we were giving tips. But as a coach, I can tell you that truly making an impact for potential clients and clients alike doesn't always just come from knowledge alone. Actually, I'd even say it comes a lot through support guidance, all of the above. But today's episode is where I'm going to tell you that your certifications and degrees are just one part of your personal and online brand. So to truly grab the attention of the community you seek, get ready for it. We desire to follow a whole human. So before you start thinking that I'll be asking you to share more of your personal life, stop right there. I instead want you to consider why you should truly befriend, follow, and look forward to seeing certain creators. Is it because they always have the information or is it because they inspire you or is it because you can relate and sometimes laugh with them or is it all three? Big hint, it's all three. (laughs) This is my my persuasive episode of me telling you that you are an expert and then you are also many other things. It's not enough to simply just be an expert sharing tips online. A truly robust and human approach to content strategy is about not only educating your audience, but also inspiring and entertaining them as well. A true, bold, and standout brand does all three of these particular things. And that is exactly what we will be exploring by using emotional connections and reactions to build a 
content matrix of sorts that attracts your clients and fans. So it's not uncommon that I'll have a sprinter who chooses their pillars for the first time and they decide that education is its own pillar. Pillars are categories you want to be known for. So if you want to go back to that episode, I, I, I don't know it off the top of my head, but it's a couple episodes back. Look at the, like the really defining your pillars is you deciding what you want to be known for, meaning you would like a follower to define you quickly. How can you make sure you hit those categories on a regular basis? Now we are adding style. We are adding a vibe using those pillars by approaching them in three different ways, education, inspiration, and entertainment. So here's why, here's why each of these content styles are important to you. So the first one here is education. So education, there it still has its role. It's just not 100% of your content. So education is something that you want to use to establish your authority and your unique style of leadership. So one person sharing education is going to be a little different than somebody else sharing the exact same tips. So I know that there are, if I'm using my own industry as an example, there is going to be the masculine approach to content strategy where you put stuff out all the time, quantity over quality, and you make sure you're seen as visible as possible. And there's going to be another style of educational content where we talk about how you can lean into your purpose and be able to build towards your goals, which we'll, we'll be talking about that in a future episode. That is me as in, as somebody who's a coach talking about my unique style. So educational content styles will allow you to absolutely show how you're a little different than the next person who's giving that advice. So it still has that beautiful role. The second one here being inspiration, or if you want to look at it similarly, aspirational type of content, this is our showing type of content style. So it's going to showcase the vision of your work and your life's purpose with you or your clients as a role model. So if I, on the educational side of things, I'm going to give you three tips of how to build out your content. My inspirational or aspirational version of it is me showing you how I do the process for myself or how I've done it with a client. So being able to tell and show is, is, is a way we're creating this robust content strategy. The last one here is entertainment. So entertainment is about creating relatability, easy connection, and ultimately an inviting environment. So part of entertainment is making sure we get off our pedestal a little bit. So I find this a lot with my educational kind of creators where they're they're trying to say that this is how you do it. This is what you must do. But without kind of poking fun at how hard it sometimes can be to implement these processes or what happens that can just be a snafu. So the entertainment piece can absolutely be a way so that you can feel relatable and that you're not putting up a wall for someone to feel that they can connect with you more easily. So we're going to dive into each of these things. But I want you to imagine your brand essentially as a piano. I feel like my piano lessons teacher would love to hear me talk about this. But separate story one day. I'll talk about how, how bad I was at piano. <laughs> but imagine your brand as a piano. And if you are only hitting one educational note for a while, we tend to not want to replay your song. You are a multi-passionate, multi-faceted human. So by embodying all three of these content styles, you're creating a bop. You're creating a song or a true symphony with your content that encourages the community to look forward to seeing you. And within that, your these new faces will have more than one way to want to stick around and follow along. So I want to go into this a little bit deeper. So if we're thinking about education, the educational content style. So this is our easiest usually of our content uh, content creation for most of us. Creating educational content is doing exactly as it sounds. What information, processes, methods, or recommendations do you know? Uh, do you know about that your ideal client would like to support? So this content style is about establishing your brand as an authority in the space and defining your leadership. So this content can come in many forms, but here's a couple of things to think about. How-to styles, five ways to, so giving giving a step-by-step -step guide, um, uh, even to walking someone through a step-by-step -step process, even more. So in general, you're going to go into explanation into solution, problem solution oriented type of places within this. So to help you start to think about how you want to build out an educational side of uh, side of things, here's a couple of questions to consider. 
what is a common challenge my client is having right now? And what is one or five ways that they can start to make it easier on themselves? So that's your, that's one basic way to get into it. What is a skill that I, as the leader or creator or brand am good at that I can break down into parts for my ideal client? What area would I like to be known for? So like I said, we're trying to really carve out our type of leadership online. What area of, of this industry would I like to be known for? And how can I create a guide for others to understand my perspective? So because you know this episode is about me wanting you to not overuse this one, we're going to move on. <laughs> the next piece being aspirational or inspiration type of content. So as we move on from educational, we want to share or show what happens once you implement the processes, the methods, the things that we've been sharing in our educational pillar. So better put, how can you show what it looks like to live in the principles or core values of your brand? So I'm going to keep hitting this because I want to, I want to really get across that, especially with the video content, we have an opportunity to show instead of tell. So it's the idea that remember when you were sitting in those big like um, classes, like with 300 people when you were in college and this teacher was trying to act like, like telling you exactly what you should do, but you knew that they didn't follow those things themselves. This is the same thing as with when a creator is telling you all the implementations, all the systems you should do, but doesn't exactly show it in the way that she creates her content and the way that she puts out her brand. So you want to be able to showcase that you are the your business's best influencer in this way, or that your clients are getting the results from implementing these things. So this is our showing, not telling content style. This is ultimately a challenge for you to show what it means to live in the way in which your brand is describing. So this style of content looks can look like you showing a fridge full of meal prepped food. If you are a chef and what in that pro and like that, you went through that process. So in general, that can feel aspirational because your client would like to have that fridge full of food and you can show the process to getting there. You can also be a day where you decided to take extra care of your nervous system. So for a client who, you know, is deals with a lot of stress, they're going to see what it looks like to take care of their nervous system. So it's a seeing thing less than a telling. Uh, let's say you we decided that you were going to do some really cool hairstyle or really cool makeup or any of those those beauty trends by showing the process. You're going to they're going to be able to be like, oh, this is attainable for me, or I am inspired to do the same. A vacation you now can afford as an entrepreneur is another one, but also another content idea could be a simple pep talk where you let your audience envision what's possible. So you can be this person that instead of going, here's the process, you would instead are the cheerleader that's telling them, this is the moment where you get to show up and do and do what you've wanted. So all of these are examples of what aspirational content can look like. I think the, one of the biggest things whenever I'm talking th this through with a client is that their first thought is that they have to be this very bougie, like, nomadic going out to all the expensive hotels like that type of vibe of a person online and in all honesty we don't love those people as much because we want to we want to see the real deal so the aspirational is simply doing the process or showing the process so that we can see you as a role model or of course you can use your clients as role models as well so a few questions to ask yourself when you're trying to start to create in an inspirational way with your content. So in what way am I living an aspirational lifestyle for my ideal client? And how can I show them what it took to get here? That's one piece. I, th I think the biggest thing that just came to my mind is that there was one day at like one o'clock in the afternoon, I decided to take like a one and a half hour walk through the North Woods of Central Park. And I decided to just show that at the time in Instagram stories and I got like three DMs of people who felt that they could not leave their desk that day. And they're like, I wish I could leave my desk. Like the, I, this is what I want to be able to do is feel like I'm allowed to leave my desk. Something as simple as showing 
like how you can detach from, I, I could detach from work and enjoy my surroundings was enough to be aspirational. So play, like understand this doesn't have to be big. It's small ways that you know that you could show what your life could look like once they in- implement things within your brand or business. Another question to ask is what mantra or spiritual practices allow me to get up and go every day that I know my audience will appreciate? Finally, my journey or my client's journey is such a great example of what's possible for others. So what key problems did I or they overcome that I could share through through storytelling? All of this is aspirational. Our last content style is entertainment. How can we think about content that entertains? So this last one in general, you can lead a brand that entertains. Now, when I say that, I am not asking you to try out for SNL. I'm not asking you to start (laughs) doing like playing with jokes and trying to do like skits. That's not where I'm going with this. I'm instead asking you to think about how you can easily relate to your clients where they're at, or even just poke fun at this process, at this, uh, at what you guide uh, your clients through from time to time. So I like to view the entertainment content style as a way to help us just laugh at ourselves or and in general, engage with social media in a playful way. So instead of thinking this means that you have to put on these skits, like I said, or the, or do stand up, I want you to think about how you can engage your audience through irony, playfulness, and simply relatable means. So this, con- this style of content may look like a health coach talking about how she eats healthy all week, but she has a sweet tooth. So she can show that some, like how she nibbles on these favorite chocolates of hers. So being able to joke about how health coach doesn't mean I'm always perfectly healthy. That's a bit of irony, right? Uh, and this could also be an organizer. Let's say someone who helps organize a home who shares that she too has a junk drawer. So again, relatable, knowing that we don't always have to be these perfect podium examples, right? A blooper reel is an example of this for a content creator. Uh, A POV of when you are vibing with your hair care playlist and you lose track of time, just having fun with these things. So a lot of the trending audios work really well here, but the idea here is, or or what my encouragement is, is don't feel as if you always have to be educational or, or inspirational to share. Allow this entertainment piece to show that you can relate and connect to your clients on an easier in an easier way. So I find that when I'm starting to activate my content under this style, I just want to bring the fun back. That's the goal. Bring the fun back to content creation. So we are not just leaders. We're not just role models for our potential clients. We also want to create this approachable environment within our content. So if you remember back to uh, episode 36, the, the 2023 trends I was sharing about, I talked about a shits and giggles post and I'm bringing it back. So this is a uh, shits and giggles post is a perfect example of an entertainment style kind of content. So sometimes we like to make this all feel difficult that we have to be sharing something over valuable that has to be a great tip or something completely original. And I want you to deploy the, shits and giggles pose to simply ask yourself weekly or daily, what is one thing that I want to share that may not make perfect strategic sense, but is something that I want people to know. So this might take form in a Lizzo TikTok dance. If you decide that that's your vibe, it might be simply where you decide to do that one lip sync trend that you didn't know if it made sense or not, but you thought it looked like a lot of fun. Putting your face out there, being more visible, this is the process that can allow you to just relax into that. So some questions to ask yourself when you're thinking about building out this entertainment content style is what are some similarities I always notice in my ideal clients that I could poke fun at? So something that does happen with some of my content planning sprinters is that they will come in and they will absolutely come up with 30 content ideas. And once they do those content ideas, I still don't see them in my feed, which is exactly why the sprint is a membership. But we can play with this idea that spent two and a half hours building out a content calendar and I forgot to post it. I couldn't poke a little bit of fun because we know that we all do that from time to time and we get to be playful about it. Just as an example. So you think about what are some similarities that you always notice within your ideal clients? 
within that too, what is something that you found funny about this week with your work? Be able to take a look at like, oh, the, the, like, I, I think that's worthy of sharing just because I have an inside look and we can just make, make this playful instead of being really drastic about it. Like for instance, I have a lot of perfectionist clients and be able to make a joke about how some people think that they're being strategic and how they end up get it's actually just perfectionism in, in disguise. So we could play with, like, I could find a training audio that might make sense to do that. Last but not least, what is one thing people assume about you or about your work that you could debunk? All of these are just examples of ways to start to think about the entertainment content style. So once you start to use these three content styles, one content idea can take three forms, allowing you to create more content without having to overthink or create three original ideas. For example, consider how you can use a three-step process in an educational carousel. Show how you do that process in an inspirational day in the life type of reel. And then decide to do a, a hold on to your bloopers from that reel and make that into an entertainment style uh, video. So you can decide to use the same idea, same content in three different forms that can allow this process to be more sustainable and energy saving for you. But what I really want to get across is by doing all three of these, you are essentially creating three very different invitations in the form of posts to join your community in some way. So you are more important than just being an expert on particular topics. You are a whole human or a brand who is led by whole humans that can share the entire experience. The more we can use social media for more connection, the easier it is for us to grow as well as enjoy the content creation process. So if you want to learn how to create a full content strategy, meaning building out how to convert, how to bring in leads, how to be your most visible, and you want to enjoy that process, I want you to consider coming into the next round of Marketing Mastery. So the next round is currently on a wait list. And I have already brought in some new a new client, which I'm really excited about. But the next round of Marketing Mastery, essentially my 12-week business activation program is open now, meaning you can get early bird bonuses, which is $300 off, a bonus group coaching call. And then you can start to do the strategies, the tactics, use the program right now by getting immediate access to the course. I'll make sure to drop into my show notes if you want to get on the wait list now. Um, but I just wanted to share that the the pieces that I shared within this episode is just one part of a really important lesson where we are building and content building a way that we're going to be bringing in more leads. So I hope you found that you get to be more of a whole human through this episode and we'll talk soon.